Sim. Já fiz. <risos> Fui testar Sim. ali, foi. Tá, vou compartilhar aqui. Um, ok, so, hey everyone, uh, my name is Felipe, I'm currently working as a software engineer at UbiMinds for Power School, and here I, I will present a brief overview of the Go programming language and how to do um, concurrent programming with that. And uh, first, uh, it's important to note that uh, I don't think there's a better language than others. I think this really depends of in the context. So uh, there's no silver bullet for that matter, but uh, it's important to know uh, another technology because uh, different problems we can solve with different technologies, but uh, not that uh, this is uh, a silver bullet for concurrent program or something like that. So I will start with, uh, our overview of the, uh, to give some context about the Go programming language. So uh, it was created in Google in 2007 to be a, a language that uh, could be both um, performatic, but also uh, with some things of uh, other languages uh, where you can be uh, more close to the memory and to the pointers and do uh, more uh, detailed and optimized code. So it's really between uh, the modern language and older languages that uh, weren't so simple. So modern languages are way more simpler, but uh, Go tries to be in between uh, being simple and performatic, but also uh, bringing ways of uh, optimizing the code. So uh, it, it has this, uh, this goal of being uh, simple. So uh, it's usual for people coming from other languages to uh, find weird that, uh, for example, in another language, when you need to treat errors and exceptions, you would have uh, uh, like try-catch blocks and some things that make the code uh, more productive and more uh, easy to do. But in Go, for example, exceptions, uh, it's treated as a return of a function as any other. So in Go code, it's usual to see, to find uh, many, uh, return error statements because every function that returns an error must, must return that as an usual value. And then this needs to be checked every time. So uh, many pieces of code in Go uh, is checking the, the errors. If the function returns an error, if it returns an error, you need to do something about that. And then this is treated uh, in line in the code. So this is more expressive and then for uh, it, it could seem uh, seems way more expressive than other languages but in the on the other hand uh, it's more uh, readable uh, and can and it's more readable and you can uh, know exactly what the code is doing uh, without uh, happening many things underneath. So in Go, there's no magic going on. There's nothing that you, you are not going to see like in the actual code. So this is uh, something that is enforced when you are using Go for, for the sake of the simplicity. So for example, this is related to what I was talking about being in between the, the, the modern languages and the, and the more uh, strongly typed language. So Go accepts both uh, notations. So you can either uh, define uh, a variable name being of the type string and then assign a value to it. When, but the, the compiler also understands if you just 
instantiate the name with a string, it's going to instantiate this variable as a string. But uh, after that, it's going to be treated as a string and then you, you can assign other kinds of values to that. So for that matter, it's strongly typed. So everything you go must be uh, typed, even the, uh, the return of the functions, the parameters, the attributes of a struct, everything is typed. So uh, to, for the sake of the simplicity again, you need to be sure of uh, the type of the object you are, you are dealing and the return of the functions. And another thing that uh, is good in Go, it is because it has a built-in garbage collector. So it's not, it, it doesn't rely on um, gar garbage collectors built apart like other languages. So it's really optimized in the compiler level. So this um, brings a better performance for the garbage collector. Um, it's compiled. So uh, every Go code, you run uh, the Go build command, which is built in the Go package as well. And then compiling that code, you have a binary for that application. And then this binary, and can run in many systems and platforms. So uh, this is a, a, an advantage because you can uh, you can catch, uh, for example, you can catch many issues during the compile time instead of the in the runtime. Uh, like in interpreted languages, you uh, many issues you get during runtime in productions or something like that. And then in Go you have this security you are safe to to make changes and to do code because the compiler will, will check for uh, usual inconsistencies and the goal also has this uh, uh, this is standard library with uh, many utility methods uh, like i said it's simple so it, it doesn't have like um, many functions to manipulate arrays in in many ways uh, it just have uh, simple operations for data structures. And also it has uh, a test package to build uh, units tests and the Go models, which is a dependence management system uh, in the Go engines, which come with the Go package as well. So um, every dependence you have in your code, you can rely on the Go models to make sure that your code is being shipped with all dependence and to manage local environment as well. So this is good in Go because it, it, this is all built in. So you can just start uh, out of the box with all of that. And then uh, as an example, uh, Go has, uh, I'm going to be brief about this because uh, this is basic, but uh, the goal of the presentation is to show the, uh, to show the concurrent features. But uh, just to give you an idea, uh, this is a structing goal. So this is like a class in other languages, but uh, for, for, from the goal perspective, it's just a, 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 a group of attributes that is uh, encapsulating this structure. And then you can do like uh, oriented object uh, programming. Um, if you declare methods for this stretch, you can do this in Go. So you can uh, say that this stretch has uh, some methods and this way you can do object oriented program as well. So this can behave like a class. And Structs are really useful when used with uh, interfaces. So this is another feature in Go, which is uh, similar in other languages uh, like Java. So an interface in Go, you have, it's a group of methods, but uh, what is different from other languages is that uh, the structs that is going to implement this interface, you only know that this is Trux implements the interface because it implements all the methods of that interface. So for example, uh, if I have a rectangle structure with a width and height, uh, 
and you implement a, an, an area method for this rectangle with the same signature as the interface. So uh, automatically for for the goal runtime, uh, any object, any rectangular object is implementing sh the shape interface because it's implementation of, of these methods. So for example, you can have a method that expects a shape object, and then you can pass to that method any structure, any object that implements this area method. And this method uh, after that can use this as a as being a shape, but uh, never knowing what is the uh, real structure that he's, he's manipulating. So uh, this is useful to, 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 to isolate layers and, and concerns like from uh, domain logic and business logic and persistence. So for example, uh, if you have a, a person service that is going to do operations on a, on a person uh, stretch, you can have a person service that uh, you define that it, it depends on an on a object that implements the person writer interface. So here it's been defined that a person writer interface is an interface that implements the right method receiving a person and returning a, an error. So for example, here in the actual code, you could have a MySQL writer, which implements this interface. And then when instantiated in person service, we can pass this MySQL implementation to that. And then from the person service perspective, he doesn't need to know if it's MySQL or Redis or any other storage. The person service just knows that it's using something that implements the right method and returns an error. So uh, you can do this. Uh, for example, it's useful for test mocking. So for example, you can test the person service code implementing uh, a writer that respects that interface, but do the operations in memory. So that way you can do this test instantiating the person service passing the memory writer instead of the MySQL writer. So this way you can test the just the service without ever touching the, the database. So this is useful to do unit tests that you don't want to do integration tests and it's faster as well. So uh, you, a memory was an example, but you can do uh, with another storage just for testing on you, or you can, in production code, you can use this uh, to, to have a composition of writers. Like you can pass a pass person writer to the service that is a, a cache writer. And then inside that, it's going to use the MySQL writer or any other writer, but then you can have, it's easy to compound new layers of, of your writers if you, if you respect this signature. So this allows to do uh, test mocking, but also, but also uh, allows you to, to do this kind of, of uh, improve in the code. And uh, this is, this is what it, this is what it's it's basic in Go, but uh, it also has uh, two uh, special features for concurrent programs, which are the Go routines and the Go channels. And uh, what is different in Go for that? Uh, other languages uh, you can build uh, threads and do concurrent program, but Go it's really easy and 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 it's way lighter than operation system threads so the go routines they are like threads but they run it they execute in the go runtime so it's 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 implemented in the in the go standard package so the go runtime will take care of handling these go routines instead of the operational system so it's more optimized and more faster than operation system threads but uh, because of that, 
uh, many go routines can, can run in the same thread. So, so you can, many can start in the same thread. So uh, it's not actual uh, parallel, but you can do parallel program as well. If you insert the, uh, if you change some, some configuration, then the go runtime we will run the Google routines in different threads as well. So this could improve performance as well. And to build a Go routine, it's simple as inserting a Go command before any function that we're calling. So anywhere in the Go code, if you insert the Go command, this function is going to run in the Go routine. So, and when you trigger a Go routine, it's going to run asynchronously, and then the code will continue. So it's really useful to, when you need to, to do many jobs, like a, a work in, in, for background jobs. And then you, you can trigger different go routines to, to, to execute those jobs at the same time. And now we're going to show in the VS Code. Uh, I have here, an example of of a go routine of a go routine code. Um, here it's just a simple code. This is uh, every go code needs this main function. So here I created this count function that receives a name and a quantity, and it's going to iterate over that quantity and print the name in the index. So if I run this here. I'm going to just use the, the go build command. And when I run the go build command, it's going to create the binary for, for that application. And then I can run that. And it's printing the, 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 res, the output for these two methods. But uh, you can see that it runs the Go routine. Uh, this one is being triggered as a Go routine because it has this Go command, but the other ones is synchronous. So that's because the program wait to exit. But if you just trigger two Go routines here, so these two calls are going to run uh, concurrently at the same time. And if you try to run this, You can see that uh, no output is show because the code is, is existing right after the, the these two go routines are created. So to overcome that, you can create uh, waiting groups. Uh, like I have an example. Uh, the difference here is that I created this weight this weight group object which uh, which came which come in the in the go package as well it's all a standard library and then this add command is saying that this weight group has to wait for for one go routine to 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 end before uh, before unlocking the process so uh, here I'm calling an anonymous function uh, in Go, you can do this and just uh, call the function right away. So the difference here is that I, I'm calling the, the count method inside this anonymous function. And then after the count has been processed, I notify in the wait group that this Go routine has finished their job. And then when I call the wait method, it's going to lock here until all of these Go routines have sent their done signal and then the, the program can continue. So this way, it's going to wait for these two go routines to end before ending the actual program. So you can see now it's printing. And it exits after the go routines were execu or execu executed. And you can see that it's running and concurrently. And, but uh, this shows uh, how the goal routine is executed. But another thing that is important is the communication, the synchronization between these, these goal routines. 
So for that, Go has the Go channels feature. So uh, the Go channels are a way to go to communicate and synchronize uh, a message between Go routines. So it's 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 simple as the Go routines. You just need to instantiate a, a channel object, and then you can send this to any Go routine or to any function to to send a message to this channel or to receive a message from this channel. So you can use this to wait for the response of a Go routine and then print that or do the process that you need for that. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, the Go channels transport just a specific value type. So you can uh, traffic uh, any data type. You have to be explicit about this when instantiation the Go channel. If it's going to transport a string or an int or, or a struct, and then this channel is going to transport only this value. And the Go channels also can be buffered or unbuffered. So when it's buffered, you can define a fixed size for this for this channel, and then it's going to wait for this channel to be full to lock the receiver or to be empty to lock the, the sender. So, so you, you can control the, the synchronization between these Go routines using a, a buffered channel. And then a buffered channel is always uh, working as a first thing first out queue. So you can send a message then everyone that is listening to this channel that is locked waiting for to receive a message, we receive that. So, for example, um, no, actually, it's, if you need to to change these two channels, you can create a channel like that. So you say that this is going to be a channel <clears throat> that traffic string values. So then you need to pass his channel to the count method so he can send the, the message to the channel. So here, this count method needs to receive this channel. And then I can have a or And then you don't need the, the wage groups. And here. So here it's executing those two go routines as well. So it's triggering those go routines. And then inside this form, it's receiving the, the message from that channel that was sent to the go routine. So each go routine is going to do the same operation, but instead of printing the name in the index, it's going to send that name to the channel. And then here inside this infinite loop, it's going to receive that message whenever it's ready and then print that. So uh, you can see it, it happened at that log. This is because we are not closing the channel. So you can do that like this, but since this is an uh, unbuffered channel, it's going to cause a deadlock if you don't clo properly close the channel and check if it's open after that. So after the Go routine has finished its job, you can just call the close command on that channel. And then you need to check that. So this, this notation, I forgot to explain that. Uh, when you have the arrow 
with the channel on the right, it, it means that it, uh, the left side is receiving that message for the channel. And this is the notation to send a message to that channel. So you have the channel in the left of the arrow, and then you send the, the message. And here it's receiving the message. And you can just receive the message or you can receive the open variable as well. Uh, in Go, this is common. You, you can return uh, more than one value in a function and you can uh, assign the value appended by comma. So here you can check if it's still open. If it's not, you can break the execution. So this way we can prevent the deadlock. And another thing is that you can, uh, instead of sending the name, because we, we created the channel as a, a channel of strings, you can create a structure to track this message as well. So for example, you can have a structure that has a name string and the index. And then you can say that this channel is a channel of, of the objects of the message strips. And then you need to change this in the signature as well. And then here you can send an object of a message containing the name and the index. And then here, the message will be an object of a message. So I need to get the, the attributes. So the message now has a name and an index. And I send this through the channel. So this way you can have a similar output than the first one that we, we ran this. And I think that's it. Uh, any questions? This is the part that everybody's always shy. Um, so this is one of the things that was there in the chat. How, for which projects should we choose Go as a, an option? Where, where is it best adding value to, to where I'm developing? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's useful um, if you're going to look for the requirements perspective. Uh, it's useful if you need to deal with uh, uh, with many operations at the same time. So these concurrent features are really useful for that. And if you need to uh, build uh, microservices or uh, little applications that you can uh communicate using channels so it's really powerful for concurrent programming but uh, on the other hand uh, if you need to do more domain logic like if, if you need to to have uh, many entities and you need to do uh, many business logics and uh, and you need to structure a project and thinking of many domain layers uh, the goal, the goal can be used for that, but uh, you need to be uh, used to the uh, package system. So uh, if it's, so, it's it's not uh, uh, suitable for that. Uh, you you can use Go for that, but uh, it's way. I think it's it, a good project to use this is when you you need uh, performance and especially. Uh, to do concurrent operations. We actually have some follow-up questions here from Marco as well, which is very interesting. Uh, one of them is, you know, how good is the race condition detector? You know, is it, how reliable is it? Mm -hmm. uh, so th this is done by the, uh, the, the Go compiler, we check for this kind of thing. And also the go runtime, uh, like in the example that I showed, uh, 
when the the channel got the, uh, deadlocked, this was detected during the runtime and the go runtime through this father error. So to to finish the processing because the the go routine uh, wasn't receiving a message. So uh, this was detected during the runtime. Uh, and you, I try to open the chat again, but you, you asked about generics. Uh, yeah, you actually, in Go, you, you can do similar things using composition, and but you, you need to write uh, a lot of code to, to do something similar to generics. So, uh, but uh, like I said, it's a way to, I think in, uh, if you really need to, to use this technology, or if you are dealing with, like I said, like I said before, with uh, domain concerns and business logic, uh, maybe sometimes you will need an implementation using generics, and then and you can use uh, another technology for that. But uh, in Go, it's I think it's it's more important to to rely on that uh, simple uh, simplicity and performance. Uh, guideline. So, uh, but you, you you can do something like generics, you know? but it's it's not like in, in a language that you you have this uh, native. Anyone Thank else? You. I have one question about the the go routines. Uh, mm -hmm. You said it's not. Uh, a thread and not a process so it's something that it's kind of exclusive to go mm -hmm. so i know that python uh, if you use uh, threads it puts everything in the same core in the processor so it's not really distributing the processing of the code in go is it uh is the language or the compiler is smart enough to like if I have like eight cars in the same machine, use it all using routines, or I have to create threads or other implementation to get it. Mm -hmm. So um, go routines, uh, they are going to uh, the handling of the go routines uh, happens in the go runtime. So all the logic to handle those go routines. Uh, go ahead has this in the in the core processing. So it's going to uh, it, it has uh, some positions in the memory that's going to map the channels and the go routines if if you need to pass a message. So this can happen inside the same thread because this is native to go, but uh, you can also uh, configure go. There's a some uh, some environment variables that you can set. Um, I'm trying to find here, but yeah. So, for example, yeah, you can use these. Uh, environment configuration to tell go to use uh, uh, more cars than it needs if you if you, uh, if you really need this for the application so uh, it's uh, usually it happens inside the same thread but you can configure the environment to run the go routines among uh, many threads and many cars so uh, it it really depends if you if you need that performance, but you you can do that. Yes. Got it. And these variables are from compile time or runtime. These are I... for the runtime. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. No. No. Uh, good question because the the go routines uh, during the compile time. It's just going to check uh, for the syntax and other things, but uh, it's going to actually uh, handle the go routines and 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 
can accommodate that uh, in the threads and in the process, of course, during the runtime. All this logic happens in the runtime. Nice, thank you. I think that is it, Felipe. Anyone? Okay, I think we're good. Thank you very much. I, uh, I've spoken to you a little bit before we actually started. I think it's always much richer when we have, you know, hands-on um, approach to, to these talks. So that was awesome. They actually, you know, demonstrated with the code. And thank you very much for, for all that. All. Yeah, thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. See you next week.